As we have seen in previous lectures, postmodernism attacks the unity of truth. This not only involves claiming that there is more than one truth about at least some subjects, but also, and this is crucial, claiming that those truths cannot be combined into one big truth. In Nietzsche's allegory of the lambs and the eagles, the lambs believe that lambs are good and eagles are evil, while the eagles believe themselves to be good and the lambs to be, well, not evil of course, but certainly not role models either. These two views are strictly incompatible. You cannot hold both of them at the same time. That would simply be a logical contradiction. And that is the way that we have to think about the postmodernist conception of truth. That different views of the world can lead to truths that you cannot combine. Truths that really contradict each other. Now, as you can imagine, this is a controversial claim. There is a reason that for thousands of years, the vast majority of thinkers have believed that truth is indeed one. That all the truths there are can be combined into one big coherent vision of the world. One way to argue for that idea is the following. Something is true if it describes the world as it really is. But there is just one world that we all share with each other. And that one world cannot contain contradictions. In reality, either there is an elephant behind you right now, or there isn't. So either it is true that there is an elephant behind you, and false that there is no elephant behind you, or it is false that there is an elephant behind you, and true that there is no elephant behind you. But it is impossible that it is true that there is an elephant behind you, and also true that there is no elephant behind you. That just can't happen. And so the argument goes, it just has to be possible to combine all the truths into one coherent story of the world. Because the world itself just is in one single way. The world cannot contradict itself. Now that is a powerful argument. If postmodernists want to attack the unity of truth and defend the idea that there are multiple different and incompatible truths, then they will have to tell a story about truth that defeats this argument. In this lecture, I want to consider one such story. The story told by the American pragmatist and postmodernist philosopher Richard Rorty. But, before moving to Rorty's theory, I want to remind us of a thinker that we looked at earlier in this course. Thomas Kuhn. For Kuhn already gives us some insight into how there could be incompatible truths. Within a paradigm, Kuhn would say, you can't have incompatible truths. Everyone is using the same concepts and the same methods, so they should be able to reach consensus about everything. But the truths of different paradigms are incompatible. Aristotle claims that the earth is standing still because you can't feel it move. Galilei claims that the earth is rotating and moving around the sun because that gives him the most elegant mathematical theory. These claims really contradict each other and both seem true from within their own paradigm. Now, Kuhn himself went as far as to write that after a paradigm changes, the scientist lives in a different world. Thus apparently undercutting the argument that we all live in the same world and that truth has to be one. But Kuhn's claim that you live in a different world after a paradigm change can, of course, only be metaphorical. You don't really live in a different world. It just looks differently to you. But can Kuhn really explain why it looks different? If there is just one world, then how is it possible for there to be different paradigms? Here, Rorty's theories about truth can give us some more clarity. When Richard Rorty talks about truth, 
he is mainly concerned with attacking one specific idea about truth, namely the correspondence theory, and defending another idea of truth, a pragmatic theory. The correspondence theory of truth is very simple and very common sense. It is the claim that a sentence is true if and only if it describes what is really the case in the world. The cat is on the table is true just in case there is a cat in the world, there is a table in the world and the cat is indeed on the table. Simple and seemingly unobjectionable. So how could Rorty attack this idea? Why would he even want to? Now, Rorty doesn't precisely say that the correspondence theory is false. Obviously, the sentence, the cat is on the table, is true when the cat is really on the table. But, Rorty points out, if you believe that the correspondence theory tells an enlightening story about truth, that is probably because you think that truth works like this. On the one hand, there is the world, which contains certain kinds of objects, like cats and tables, and certain relations, like being on something or being under something. So in the world, there is a lot of structure, and part of the structure of the world is that the cat is on the table. Then on the other hand, you have language, which has the same kind of structure. It has nouns like cat and table, and ways to signify relations between those nouns, like the phrase is on. And truth then means that the structure of your language and of the sentence you are speaking is the same as the structure of the world. The structure of the sentence, the cat is on the table, corresponds, is identical with the real structure in the world of the cat being on the table. So, what is wrong with that picture? Well, Rorty agrees with the Saussure and Nietzsche and many other thinkers that the world itself doesn't really have a structure. Certainly not a structure just like language. The world itself doesn't come pre-packaged as cats and tables. It is our language which makes those groupings and we project the groupings onto the world. Completely different languages would have been possible. But if that's true, we cannot speak about the structure of the world as something that is independent of our language. And truth cannot be the structure of the world being the same as the structure of our language. Because again, we only discover a particular structure in the world because we speak a particular language. So, the correspondence theory then gives us a wrong picture of truth, one where we compare the world with our language. But that's a comparison that we could never make, because we always see the world through our language. So instead Roddy wants to think about truth in a different way. And we have to start by thinking about language in a different way. Language doesn't try to describe the structure that is already there in the world. No, language, Rorty tells us, is simply a tool. It is a tool we develop to reach our goals, whatever they are. There are many different types of goals and people develop different languages or, to use Rorty's favorite word, different vocabularies to reach those goals. For example, Modern physics wants to achieve accurate predictions of the natural world and technological applications. To do so, it has developed a vocabulary that speaks about atoms and electrons and gravitational waves. Another example. Mainstream Western politics wants to achieve stable societies with a reasonable amount of economic freedom and personal liberty. To do so, it has developed a vocabulary that speaks of constitutions, human rights, freedom of assembly, libel, and so on. And the last example, Theravada Buddhism 
wants to achieve personal liberation from suffering. To do so, it has developed a vocabulary that speaks of nirvana, karma, dukkha, rebirth, and so on. So, what is truth? According to Rotti, a theory is true if it is the best theory at helping us to achieve our goal. For a modern physicist, the truth is what allows the most accurate predictions and the best technological applications. For the political theorist, the truth is what allows the most stable society with the most freedom. For the Buddhist, the truth is whatever is most efficient at getting us to nirvana. Nobody ever knows for sure that they have found a true theory, because you can never be sure that there is no other theory which is even better at getting you to your goal. But you can certainly get a good sense of the truth of your theory by seeing how well it works out in practice. So, how does Rodier's idea that language is a tool for different goals and that truth is a measure of how well that tool works relate to the postmodernist attack on the unity of truth? Well, Rotti goes on to point out that different people can have very different goals. And that if you have different goals, very different and even incompatible theories might be true. The physicist claims that the world is made up of extremely small particles. The Buddhist claims that the world is merely an illusion. Which is true. Well, both are, but for different goals. The Western political theorist claims that freedom of speech is a fundamental human right, while the ISIL ideologue claims that heretics should be killed. Who is right? Well, both are. It just depends on the goal you have in mind for society. So if language is a tool, and truth is usefulness of that tool, and if there can be incompatible goals, then there can also be incompatible truths. This is Rorty's argument against the idea that truth is one. It is a powerful argument, but whether it is true, well, that might depend on your goals.